It's time for another Dice Tower Review with John Richard. Howdy gamers, greetings from Indianapolis, Indiana, the gaming capital of the world. It's time for another board game review with me, Indiana John. Today we're taking a look at Colt Express, which is one of the three nominees for the 2015 Spiel des Jahres, which is the German Game of the Year. It's a real prestigious nomination for this one. It's a game about uh, being a bandit or a train robber in the Old West, and you're going around inside of the train, uh, and it's actually a three-dimensional, uh, you'll see the components in a second, a three-dimensional train where uh, you are going around in this train trying to collect loot, steal money, avoid the marshal, and uh, beat up on your fellow uh, train robber so you can get the most money. So it's a very interesting little game, and um, it's one I'm really excited to try out, especially since it was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres. So uh, let's take a look at the setup and gameplay of Colt Express and see if we can answer that all-important gaming question. Is it fun? So in Colt Express, you're playing a bandit who's robbing a train, and there's multiple bandits on the train, and you're uh, just trying to be the player who ends up with the most money uh, in the end of the game. So the main attraction of this game is obviously these amazing 3D components. So you end up with um, these great 3D train cars that you have to uh, put together. Oops, all the money fell out of them here. But you'll get um, one of those per player. So in a three-player game that I've set up here, you have the locomotive with three cars. But it comes with six cars, so you can play up to a six-player game. You just make a longer train. So when you set this thing up, you're going to look in the bottom floor of each of these train cars and it'll tell you what kind of loot to put in there. So uh, here we have little bags of money that are worth different values. This one's worth 300. Um, and then you also have jewels that are each worth 500 that you can, you're going to put in there as well. So uh, you'll just put whatever it says on, on there on the uh, floor of the train cars. Then in the locomotive here, you have a, a marshal uh, character who is trying to protect the people who are on the plane. So he's going to start off inside of the locomotive and then he gets a strong box uh, briefcase full of money that uh, might be something that the bandits can steal from him. So that's going to start off in the front there. You're going to pick a start player and then uh, you will place your uh, um, bandits into the train in kind of a, a predetermined arrangement that kind of alternates between the last car and the second to last car. Uh, these things back in the back here, just so you know, completely unnecessary, but they made these little 3D um, you know, kind of set pieces here. That's a little, you know, bluff. You know, this is a cactus, you know, we've got even some little, it's like, it's, I think that's an armadillo actually. So really fun 3D components here. You can just set those up however you want to uh, before the game starts. Now each player is going to get a, um, a roll card. And uh, this is Doc. There's five, uh, six of them in the game, like I said. And um, each character is going to have a special ability of some kind. You normally get six cards. This, uh, this uh, Doc uh, character is going to get seven cards. And then um, you're also going to have a character deck and a bullet deck. And the idea here is that you're going to be uh, taking, you're going to be going around on the train, moving around, moving up and down, uh, shooting at other people, punching them, stealing their money, and picking up things uh, using these action cards. And you're going to be kind of selecting these in a bit of a programmed movement uh, capacity. Then you also have these bullet cards that every time you shoot somebody, you're going to give them one of these bullet cards. It's going to go into their deck of cards and uh, kind of gum up their deck of cards and make it make it more difficult for them to get things done. So you have six of those and every time you get rid of one you can see it kind of comes out of the chamber there so that's kind of neat. But every, every player is going to get this set up and they're also going to start off with a $250 bag of money to start off with because it's their seed money for their uh, thieving adventures. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at how a round works in Colt Express and that'll give you sort of a flavor for how this uh, very interesting little game works. So there's five different actions that you can take in Colt Express, and you get this deck of character cards and two copies of each action. So I'm just going to go over the different actions of what you can do um, on the train here. There are two cards for movement. One is a left to right movement. And if you play this card, then if you're inside the train, then you can move one space uh, forward or backwards. Or if you're on top of the train, on the roof, then you can move up to three spaces in either direction. So you can move a little bit faster when you're um, on top of the train on the roof. You have a card that is for up and down movement. So if you're on the roof, that will allow you to move down to, into the car that you're in, and vice versa, it may allow you to move up onto the roof. 
Now the main goal in this game is to get money, and so if you happen to be in, in a room that has some uh, loot tokens in it, then you can play the money card, which will allow you to select one of these and put it into uh, onto your player card. So you'll know that the jewels are all worth 500, but the uh, little purses of money are worth various things. So you'll just be able to collect money that way. Then you might get into some uh, bit of trouble with your other bandits. So you have the um, the punching card where you can punch another player. If you punch them, like if blue punches red here, red will drop one of their loots. So if they have one of their loot tokens, they have to put it back onto the train onto the floor here. Or if they're on the roof, they'll put it up on the roof. And then from having been punched, uh, they will then uh, kind of flee and move one adjacent uh, car. Oh, let's set those guys back up. Yeah. Uh, then you also have the um, the shooting uh, gun card, I guess, where you can shoot somebody else. Now, you can't really kill anybody in this game, but you can shoot them and slow them down. And so if you're in the same car as somebody, uh, you, actually, you don't even have to be in the same car as somebody. If you're one car away, um, if you're inside the train, or if you're on the roof, it can be anywhere that's in line of sight where you're not being blocked by anybody, you can shoot another player. And by slowing them down, you're going to, like I said, give them one of these uh, bullet cards. It's then going to go into their deck of cards and is useless to them. It doesn't count as an action, so it kind of gums up their deck. Um, so the more of those you get, the worse it's going to be for you. You know, I just realized as I mentioned this that I, I said that there were five actions. There are actually six actions, and the uh, sixth action is the marshal action. And so that action is going to allow you to move the marshal. So the marshal is trying to protect the, the uh, people inside the train. So when you move the marshal, you'll just move him one uh, area to the left. He never gets up on the roof. He always stays inside. Now, if the marshal happens to move into a car that contains other bandits, then those bandits will immediately flee to the roof. And they're also, each one of them is going to receive one of these neutral bullet cards. So this is kind of like a bullet from the marshal. And it does the same thing as a bullet card from another bandit. It's just going to gum up their deck and uh, you know, not really be anything, any sort of an action. But uh, that's going to go in, go in from the marshal. So those are the basic actions that you're going to get. Now, let's take a look at how a round works so you're going to see how you put these actions into play. Now the game of Colt Express is played over a series of five rounds. You have all of these round cards that are going to be based upon the number of players. This deck is for two to four players, there's also one for five to six. And then you have these station cards, there's three of them, and that's going to represent the last round. So you'll pick one of those randomly and make that the last round. And you'll take four of these randomly, uh, put them together, and then that's going to be your, your round cards. Then you will turn over one of these, and that's going to be the first round. So I showed you all the actions that you're going to do, and the way that you're going to play them is it's going to be a, a, a series of turns where cards will be played in a particular order, and then once the round is over, then it's almost like uh, playing back a movie. Uh, it's almost like program movement where you're then going to go through the whole deck of cards that were played and play out on the, the stage here of the, of the train exactly what happened. So if you think about it, this is almost like kind of like a movie script and then this is the actual movie itself being played out on the train. So the ways this will work, if you look at this card here, is that there's going to be four total rounds or uh, turns, if you will, uh, where e each player will play a card in each one of these turns. So in this case, you just would play a card down in front of you. The little tunnel means that you'll play a card face down, and then two more cards, and then you'll uh, finish up the round. This is a special ability here at the end of the round where it, uh, actually every uh, player is going to get moved back to the last car. So there's several different special abilities that can happen there. So the way this would sort of play out in this round is that uh, if, you know, we have the three players here. You'd have, you know, here's the first player plays this card, and then the second player would play a card. And you're kind of seeing what the other players are playing. Oh, you know, they'll, maybe you'll play this one. Okay, now it's the second round. Everyone's played a card. The second round, now you're going to play a card face down. So now the green player plays one face down, the blue player face down, the red player face down. I'll get those back in the camera frame so you can see what we're doing here. Um, and then, uh, you know, a third card will be played. Now, again, face up, you know, face up, face up. And then the fourth round, face up, face up, face up. Everybody making decisions about. So now you have this um, stack of cards, and this is going to represent what's going to happen during this round. You've already sort of predetermined it, and now that's all that's left to do is to play it out. So you'll then turn over the cards, so that uh, you know it goes back to chronological order. I guess this is the first card that was played, and then you'll turn the cards over one by one and perform these actions. So in this case, we've got the. Uh, the green player has decided to take some money, so then the green player will pick one of these uh, and will put it in, in front of her uh, 
uh, player uh, board there. Now we move on to the next one. Okay, so now the blue player is going to shoot somebody. So he, he can't shoot, you know, he can basically shoot in here and pick someone to shoot. So uh, he would pick one of these players and uh, give them one of his bullet cards. And, and uh, so that's, that, that's how that would work. Moving on, you know, then the, the red player, he's going to punch somebody. So he's got to punch the green player. So he's going to punch them. It's going to cause them to drop their loot. Maybe they drop the thing that they just uh, put on there. And then and then that's going to, uh, like I said, the punch card is going to cause them to flee. So then you know, that's going to going to move there. So you can sort of see that you're going to continue to play these out in order and just do all the things that, that have happened. And so maybe your plan that you came up with uh, and the order that you wanted to do things works out for you, but maybe because of the cards that the other players have played, it doesn't work out quite well for you. Um, and, then, and then the cards that are face down are interesting because you know that uh, you didn't see those, so you're not really sure uh, what those are supposed to be. So then you'll just kind of continue through playing out the, the, the movie of this uh, round, and then you'll get to the end and uh, you'll complete this five total times um, and uh, you know playing out the rounds uh, exactly the way that they're they're uh, uh, they're shown in the cards uh, there's lots of different ones like that one's got uh, five total cards and two different tunnel phases um, you know this one you actually have a phase where you play two cards at the same time so there's lots of different variety as far as those go and then uh, you'll basically finish up the game and whoever has the most money will be the winner of Colt Express so every year the Spiel des Jahres comes around and they nominate some games for it and there's usually a lot of discussion and argument over what games should have been nominated. And this is one that I think was on a lot of lists as a possible nominee and I think there was a lot of gamers who were not real happy about it uh, because this is a game that is very light and has a lot of luck involved. As you can see from my rules explanation, you know, you make your plan by playing down those action cards but then it just sort of plays out and there's not much you can do. When your card comes up if it's you get the choice of moving left or right or perhaps the choice of who to shoot but um, you don't really have a whole lot of control over what goes on so uh, there's a lot of luck involved and then just sort of a lot of just seeing what happens but I think that for a family game a light game I think that's a lot of the fun of it is that you you make your plan and then if it doesn't work out I mean, it's kind of like Galaxy Trucker. You make the best ship that you can, and then it just gets blown to pieces, and that's kind of the fun of it. You laugh about it, you shrug your shoulders, and so forth. This game is sort of like that, too. So, you know, you might get punched, you might get shot, uh, you might the marshal might uh, force you to climb up into the roof of the train or whatever, but um, I feel like this game has a real cool cinematic feel to it, where you feel like you are playing out a movie, and, you know, and, and you get to see how things go, and it just sort of feels like a train is just, you know, barreling down the tracks there, and people are up on the roof shooting at each other, I, I think it's very cool. So from a thematic standpoint, it's fantastic. Of course, the 3D components help with that an, uh, an awful lot, and they're great components, and I, and I think some of the some of the nicest components for the for the price of this game. Um, so I think that as a Spiel des Jahres nominee, I think it's great. I think it really does fit the category quite well. I, I, I have no idea if it's going to win or not, but but I think it's a lot of fun. Um, so I mean, I think that for families and for maybe gateway gamers or, or uh, you know something to take to a family picnic with some folks that wouldn't ordinarily play games, you know, they might uh, enjoy this. A lot of, a lot of it because of the components and maybe the Wild West theme and the cartoony artwork, but I think it's great. So I mean, I give this a good recommendation. It's not something that I'm gonna bring out a whole lot with my uh, gaming friends because it is kind of light and doesn't have a whole lot of strategery involved with it so that my uh, gaming friends tend to like and that I, I tend to like. But I think that as a, uh, a gateway game or a family game, I think it's a lot of fun. So this gets a solid recommendation from me. Uh, I think it's a lot, of, uh, a lot of fun. Colt Express. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.